You'll always be a burden living off our parents in their house, my brother said. As the eldest son, I'll take over the company, pack your things and leave. I can't believe you're still living here at your age. Go live on your own. My brother and his wife yelled at me after our father passed away. Then his wife threw water on me and laughed. How could they treat me like this, especially since they don't know I'm the one chosen to take over the company? I can't take this insult anymore. I've decided to cut ties with them and get back at them somehow. My name is Brenda, and I'm a 35-year-old company employee. I live at home, taking care of my mother, who recovered from a serious illness. I lead a busy life. I once hoped to marry by 28 and have kids by 30, but since that didn't happen, I've decided not to marry and to live independently. What I look forward to the most is having dessert with my mom at a new cafe on the weekends. Mom, should we go to the cafe this weekend? I heard they have a new strawberry parfait. Want to try it? That sounds delicious. Let's go, I'm looking forward to it. My mother enjoys these outings as much as I do. The weekdays are busy, but having something to look forward to keeps me going. We'll make it to Saturday, Mom, but don't overdo it. My mother had heart surgery three years ago, and at one point we were preparing for the worst but she recovered quickly and is still with us. She has regular checkups every two weeks, takes lots of medicine, and stays healthy by exercising. Brenda, thank you so much. Because of you, I've been able to stay healthy. I thought it was the end, but I'm glad I fought through the treatment. My mom usually has to watch her diet, but once a month her doctor lets her eat whatever she wants. She looks forward to these outings with me. It might seem odd for a 35-year-old to enjoy going out with her mom, but it's a special time for me. My dad doesn't talk much, but he always enjoys listening to our conversations. The talks between you and Brenda are like a comedy sketch. It's fun to listen to, he says. We're just having some bro talk. Why would that be a comedy? I reply. My father runs a company and works hard, so he comes home tired every day. His routine is to relax on the sofa, watch TV, and have a beer with a snack. He used to handle everything at work by himself, but now he delegates some tasks to others, so it's less physically demanding. I'm proud of how hard he works for our family. Lately, though, he's been having some off days, and I wouldn't be surprised if he names a successor soon. But for some reason, he's hesitant. Dad, don't you plan to let Philip take over the company? You seem really tired. My older brother Philip is two years older than me. I've always thought it would be better for my father to let someone else manage the company. I will never let Philip take over, my dad says. I'd rather give the company to someone else. He would ruin it in a month. He doesn't know anything about business and spends money recklessly. I can't trust the company to someone like him, my father said angrily. I had always wondered what happened between them, so I asked my mother. She told me that my brother Philip had financial problems during his college years. Back then, our family's financial situation was tough until the company started doing well. I chose to attend a cheaper public high school to help support the family, but Philip went to an expensive private school and spent his time playing around instead of working part-time. Even after Philip became an adult, my father asked him several times to help with the company. Philip always refused, saying, Why should I help with a failing company? You started it because you liked it, so deal with it yourself. On top of that, Philip repeatedly used the company's money for his nightlife, eventually becoming uncontrollable. My parents didn't want to show me their struggles, so they kept quiet about Philip's issues for a long time. I wonder why Philip became so selfish, my mother said sadly. We raised both of you the same way, and we didn't spoil him. Philip was always full of complaints and sarcasm, with a narrow-minded personality. This year, Philip turned 37 and is set to marry his girlfriend, who is seven years younger than him, after a long relationship. Just a week ago, I got a call from him saying he would come to greet us. But instead of calling our parents, he called me. Next week, I'm bringing my girlfriend over. It's a visit with the intention of marriage, so I can't bring her to a messy house, right? Make sure to tell Dad and Mom to prepare and tidy up, he said. Why are you telling me this? Why don't you talk to them directly? I asked, confused by his attitude. Philip's way of speaking was as unpleasant as ever. Even though I didn't want to, I decided to tell our parents, so they wouldn't be caught off guard by his visit. Philip is getting married, I told them. 
He said he's coming next weekend with her for greetings, so we should clean the house and prepare to host them. He should have told you himself instead of asking me. My parents sighed heavily and were silent for a while. However, they hoped that if the marriage went well, Philip might visit less often and spend less money. Let's make sure to handle this greeting properly, as if it were the last, my father said with determination. Then the weekend arrived, and Philip brought his fiancée to our family home. It's been a while. Sorry I couldn't get in touch sooner. I think Brenda told you, but I'm getting married to my girlfriend. Nice to meet you, I'm Holly. Please remember me, Philip said, but Holly's introduction felt off. She was wearing a miniskirt, heavy makeup, and had a smug attitude. Her greeting wasn't appropriate for a first meeting with our family. We were all stunned, but Philip didn't seem to care at all. They were a matching pair in that way. Amid the tense atmosphere, my mother tried to lighten the mood by asking Holly, do you work somewhere? This only made Holly angry. Huh? Work? I'm not working right now, but is there a problem? I plan to be a housewife, and I have no intention of working after marriage. Don't expect me to help out at your company, Holly said, even though no one had mentioned it. Her words angered my parents and me, but we decided to keep our cool and not stoop to their level. After they left, we talked about how we felt. What on earth was that fiancé thinking, my father said. She spoke as if she was looking down on my company. What does Philip see in such a rude and presumptuous woman? It's really terrible. Are all people these days like that? Of course not, Mom, I reassured her. Don't lump us together with her. That evening we couldn't stop talking about my brother and his fiancé during dinner. The three of us agreed to keep our distance from Philip and his future wife as much as possible. Later, Philip contacted us again. He said everything was going smoothly with the marriage, but they planned to register it first and decide on the wedding ceremony later. Make sure to tell Dad and Mom to prepare a wedding gift early, he told me. You're a working adult, so I'm counting on you. To avoid any complaints, I wrapped up a larger-than-usual amount of money as a gift and handed it directly to Philip. Later I received a thank-you call from Holly, but I could tell she was eating during the conversation. Thank you for the gift. I thought your father's company was about to go out of business, so I'm lucky to have received this money, she said. What? What do you mean by going out of business? I replied, shocked. My father's company had about 30 employees and was doing fine, but Holly just laughed mockingly. Upset by her disrespectful comments, I quickly ended the call. A month later, something unexpected happened. I had taken a day off to take my mother to the hospital, but that morning, our rarely used home phone rang. We were even thinking of canceling the landline, so the sudden ring startled me. Hello, I answered. It was an employee from my father's company, and their voice was trembling. Something terrible has happened, they said. The president suddenly clutched his chest and collapsed. We've called an ambulance, and he's being taken to the hospital now. Could the family please head there? My mother, who was getting ready for her checkup, saw me pale with the phone in my hand and immediately understood something was wrong. Brenda, what happened? Is everything okay? Dad collapsed and has been taken to the hospital by ambulance. We need to hurry, Mom. We decided to take a taxi to the hospital. On the way, we were overwhelmed with anxiety but kept praying for my father's safety. When we arrived at the hospital and rushed to the reception, we gave my father's name and were immediately directed to the emergency department. A stern-faced nurse soon arrived and said, Please come this way. She led us to a hospital room. With trembling hands, I opened the door and saw my father lying there. He had already passed away. My mother and I stood in stunned silence as the doctor explained what had happened. When the ambulance arrived, he was in cardiac arrest. We tried our best to resuscitate him, but he never regained consciousness. I'm very sorry. My father had suffered an acute myocardial infarction, and nothing more could have been done. The suddenness of it all made it hard to accept, but seeing my father's peaceful face, I remembered how he had worked tirelessly for us every day. It felt like he might finally be able to rest, which brought me some comfort. I had informed my brother about the situation on our way to the hospital. I'm at work and can't just leave like you can, he said coldly. It's probably nothing serious, so don't make such a big deal out of it. He then abruptly hung up. Even after I told him about our father's death, his insensitive response was, I see. Well, it was just his time, I guess. 
better than him becoming an old burden. It was hard to believe we were part of the same family. I felt a deep contempt for my brother. While my mother and I were engulfed in sorrow, time didn't stop for us, and we had to start making funeral arrangements. During this time, the thought of my father's company suddenly crossed my mind. What will happen to the company? I wondered. There are employees depending on it. I murmured, and then my mother pulled out a notebook. This is a manual for managing the business that your father worked on for a long time. If you're willing, Brenda, he wanted you to take over the company. What do you think? The thick notebook she handed me was packed with information and know-how my father had gathered over the years. His presence was immense, and the hole in my heart wouldn't be filled. But once the funeral was over, I would have to face reality. I'll do it, Mom. I'll try my best. There was no reason for me to refuse. Deep down, I had always felt that someday I might need to take over my father's business. The funeral was scheduled for the following day. At the funeral, my brother and his wife made an unbelievable statement. Hey, Brenda, how long do you plan to mooch off our parents and live at home? What do you mean by that? I couldn't understand why they would bring this up at such a time. You're just a parasite living off mom. As the eldest son, I will take over the management of the company. Pack your bags and get out of here. I can't believe you're living at home at your age, depending on your parents. Live a more independent life. His wife then threw water in my face from a glass and laughed loudly. I couldn't take it anymore. There was no reason for me to be insulted so unreasonably. I vowed to cut ties with these two and retaliate against them by any means necessary. Fine, I'll leave this house. When I declared my decision to leave, they were unnaturally pleased. Now Dad's company and the house will be mine. Plus, if we live with Mom, we can manage her pension. That's right, Philip. What a great idea. We'll be rich, and if you're the president, I'll be the president's wife. Doesn't that sound wonderful? They were gleefully discussing their future. To maximize their discomfort, I decided to keep the fact that I would be taking over the company hidden until after the funeral. Revealing it now would ruin everything. Pretending to be upset, I packed my bags and left the house as they had demanded. During the funeral, Philip pompously told my father's employees, from now on, as the eldest son, I will be taking over the company. Please support me. Even as everyone was mourning my father's passing, Philip continued with such remarks, completely ignoring the mood of the gathering. He's hopeless, my mother sighed, dismayed. Only my foolish brother and his wife remained unaware of the entire truth. Even after the funeral ended smoothly, the busy days continued with various administrative tasks. During this time, I noticed over a hundred missed calls and messages left on my answering machine from my brother. I decided to answer the next call. Hey, what the hell did you do? When I went to Dad's company, they told me the next president is his daughter. I haven't heard anything about this. I am the president. I've even quit my job at the other company. My brother ranted in anger, his statements disjointed, showing he didn't understand the situation he was in. He had excitedly gone to the company to introduce himself as the new president, only to be coldly received and ignored by all employees. How could Dad leave his precious company to someone like you who only thinks about himself, and I heard you and your wife are deep in gambling debts? What? How do you know that? I haven't told anyone. When I resigned from my previous job, I had mentioned taking over my father's company. When you have a sibling, it's a good idea to do a background check. There's often trouble involving money, my former boss had advised me. At first, I didn't understand what he meant, but just to be safe, I investigated my brother and his wife. The fact that they were swamped in gambling debts came to light. I had you and your wife investigated. How were you planning to repay those mounting debts? Were you planning to use the money Dad left behind? Was that why you wanted to kick me out and move back home? It's shockingly short-sighted. Why? How could this? It turned out that the debts, including those of his wife, had piled up to the point of no return, but I would never allow them to count on Dad's estate. Anyway, it's already decided that I will take over Dad's company. That was his last wish. The lawyer will soon confirm the will, but I don't think there will be a single penny left for you guys. What? That's a lie. Through the phone, I could sense my brother's panic, and I silently celebrated in my heart. Then the call was passed to my sister-in-law, who lashed out at me in anger. Listen here, your brother is suffering, so as his sister, you should help him. You have no heart. You're the worst. 
I could have retorted in kind, but it would have been a waste of time, so I chose to ignore her. Please pay back the debts you created yourselves. It's irrelevant to me and mom, so please don't contact us again. Your remaining options are to work hard and pay off the debt or declare bankruptcy. Good luck. Goodbye. Wait a minute. Listen to me until the end. I could hear her screaming from the handset, but I hung up the phone. They would now be chased by debt repayment and likely live in poverty for the rest of their lives. It was a fitting consequence for relying on my father's money and not valuing family. If they suffered even a bit as a couple, it would serve them right. Subsequent messages were left on my answering machine a few times. Currently, my brother and his wife have started working at a new factory, but their marital strife continues daily, and it seems a divorce is imminent. I do not want them to interfere in any way as I work to grow the company, so I intend to completely cut ties with them. Thus, my plan for revenge was successfully completed, with a sense of refreshing closure.